Hello and welcome to another episode here on my channel. My name is Caswell and today I want to give you another update regarding the Blue Box Conspiracy because Gamescom is drawing near and a lot of people believe that this might be the next big thing for Abandoned and Blue Box Studios. Now if you don't know what that is, definitely make sure to look up some other videos like some videos I have on my channel or some other videos here on YouTube or read it up on Reddit, there are tons of information out there. But today I want to talk about two things. First, is abandoned slash blue box a scam? Well, what do you need for a scam? First, you need a product you can scam. In this case, abandoned. People believe that abandoned might be a new Silent Hill or a new Kojima game entirely. And under that premise, people would probably buy into it, right? So yeah, the first point for a scam is totally there. They could totally utilize it, or maybe they're already utilizing it. The second point you need for a scam, and this is where it gets already complicated, money. You want to make money from the people, right? And when you look at it, the problem is there's nothing there. There is no pre-order. There is no buy the game now, there is no early access, there is no Kickstarter, there is no Patreon, there is nothing there how people could give the studio money. In fact, all the money Blue Box Studio has apparently acquired in the last few years, they said in a recent interview, they gave that back. Which makes it so much weirder because people basically um, concluded that they make money through, let's say, the government, right? They are getting some tax tax fee or something like that. And there is some money laundry scheme running in the background and they make from the government in the country they are living in. But apparently in a recent interview, um, Hassan said they only got funding from private investors. They're not getting any money from the government. And they actually gave that money back to the investors. And it's like, wait, how do you gave that back? You had a studio running for over six years. You apparently tried to work on video games, as you said, and you are now working on a new game and you don't have any money income. There is no money coming in. And the only money you got was apparently from private investors, as you said. And you know, telling me you have given back that money? How do you survive? How do you survive from a company perspective? You must be very rich or know somebody who is rich. And we don't know, never told us, but it's like all the money they ever got from outsiders was given back and they don't make money themselves right now. I was like, what? What is that? That, that is so weird. But however, for the whole scam discussion here, this studio has no way of making money from Abandoned right now. So yeah, that, that doesn't fit. The third point would be you need gullible people to make a scam work. You need people who believe all the bullshit. And you know what? At the beginning, that was definitely the case. People believed 100% that Abandoned could be a new Kojima game or like a Silent Hill game or something like that. But now, no people don't believe that anymore. Like most people turn their back on this game. They turn their back on this whole conspiracy thing and only a few people believe it still, but they wouldn't pay money for this. Like I'm somebody who still believes that something fishy is going on here, right? But even then, if they would now ask me for money, I wouldn't give that to them. If they would say, hey, you can now pre-order Abandoned on the PlayStation Store, and I would be like, no, <laughs> definitely not. So we are already beyond the point where people would be gullible enough to fall for a scam. So what do we have? Two out of three points which basically make the scam impossible and that's good enough for me. So no, Abandoned is not a scam. Well, even if they try to be, it would be one of the most horrible executed scams I have ever seen in my life. But that doesn't really answer the question if Abandoned is really something else than it is supposed to be. 
And this brings us to the second point I really want to talk about today, and that is journalist interviews. As you know, Hassan Kamaran, the head of Blue Box Studios, gave multiple interviews. And one of the latest interviews was with IGN. And I was reading through this interview, and I have to say, this is the worst interview I have ever seen. It's it's not an interview. It's like a pre-printed Hassan said opinion piece. Look, I know a lot of people don't know this, especially if you're new to my channel. Um, most people know this who have watched me for years now. But I have worked as a games journalist. I have worked as a games journalist for years. No, I was not um, doing international pieces. I was only doing national pieces. But I have been doing games journalism for years. And I have been doing tons and tons of interviews in my time. I talk to AAA studios. I talk to indie studios. I talk to publishers, developers, PR companies. I also sign tons of NDAs in my time. And what I've been seeing here so far makes me really question about what is going on, right? Like the IGN interview is just horrible. It's absolutely horrible. It makes no sense. It's literally, literally just um, Hassan telling the journalists how he thinks about the affairs and they're just printing it. They're not asking him any questions. And it's like, wait, what are you doing? Like, you ask questions. Where are your questions? It's the same thing a few months ago, and this was actually what really rattled my cage, was when apparently Jason Schreier had an interview with Hassan for an hour, and before that, he said, oh yeah, I am 100% sure that this is a Kojima game. So he had an interview with Hassan, and after the interview, he was like, I don't know what this is, but I'm out and I have more questions than ever. I was like, wait, what? What, what? what do you mean like you are out? Here's the thing. You can think about Jason Schreier whatever you want, but this person is a bloodhound. He knows how to write articles. He knows how to conduct interviews. He has written articles with some really good investigative journalism for years and you're telling me like after an hour with speaking of with Hassan he was like yeah I'm out I'm out and like nothing piqued his curiosity about what he said he wasn't like so yeah folks I talked to Hassan this dude is full of bullshit like he's making stuff up on the go don't trust him or he says hey like yeah, I looked into him, like, he is clearly an indie developer, like, yeah, yeah, that is, that is totally what this is. And the point is, though, he's not doing that. He just said, I have more questions than before. Well, you had an interview with him, why didn't you ask the questions then and give us some answers on it, but you were out. It's like, that's, that's not how you normally conduct those interviews. And that's normally how you not talk about like interviews and what you have found out about the gaming industry. So why is it that you were acting like rather differently in this one right now? And it's the same thing with IGN. As I said, the opinion piece they put out there is it's it's an opinion piece. It's not an interview. It is an opinion piece with some of Hassan's quotes about what he said. And you know where I have seen this before? In a few interviews I had. So back in the day, and I remember this still vividly because it was one of my rather first interactions in the video game industry as a journalist, was when I was at Gamescom and, and Seasoft approached me. And they were like, hey, so we have this game here with interviews and gameplay demos and you want to see it. I was like, uh, sure, but what is it? Can't tell. 
oh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I, yeah, I'm interested. I have time. Sure, let's do this. Yeah, okay, before we talk to you in any capacity or show you anything, you have to sign those documents. You have to sign those NDAs, aka non-disclosure agreements. And you have to sign those. And if you break any of those NDAs, we will sue your ass till kingdom come. I was like, whoa, okay, well, yeah, sure, let's do that. And, well, I signed the documents, and then I was having interviews, and I was actually playing the game. Interestingly enough, I didn't know what the game was called. I played the game. I, I talked to the developers, knowing a lot about the game, but I didn't know the name of the game. And later on, a few days afterwards, they announced the game at Gamescom, and it was Wildstar. Wildstar was the game I was basically checking out without knowing about it. And the NDAs were up till the date where they would make those announcements. But I was not allowed to disclose that. I was not allowed to talk about the NDA at all. So for me, I, I had to be like dead silent about it. And that is exactly what this reminds me of. Like all the journalists who really wanted to have like a tough talk with Hassan got the interview and afterwards they were like, yeah, so we will now throw the biggest softball ever at Hassan when it comes to the questions. And actually we are not conducting an interview here for the next hour. We have just some fun talk. Like that's what we got so far from all the journalists. Like just some really relaxing talk about a few things. And then the IGN interview, like as I said, it wasn't even an interview. It was just some blurbs from Hassan where he again defended the weirdness without even talking about like why it was weird for the people. Like there was a lot of stuff where as a journalist, I would have asked, but Hassan, you have to understand they like... People don't understand this. Can you elaborate on this? Nobody did that. Nobody asked him those questions. And as I said, that's what really weirds me out. Like that's what really weirds me out. When you have the chance of an interview and you decide not to pursue that, but you still decide to print it. I was like, I wonder if they had to sign an NDA where they saw what a bandit is. But instead of talking about it, they were just giving the chance to basically print an interview, like a pre-screened interview with Hassan. And they decided to do that. Jason Schreier probably got the same offer. And he was like, nope, <laughs> no. If, if I would print that, even as a joke or as a PR marketing campaign, my, my reputation would be gone. And this is probably why you said, like, yeah, I have a lot of questions, but I'm out. Because he was not allowed to ask questions. He was not allowed to disclose those, but he probably signed an NDA. And he is now out because, well, he would definitely not post any of the pre-approved interviews so to speak because he doesn't want to harm his reputation and it seems like a lot of other interviewers decided to do so the same right when they told us that they had an interview with Hassan that they now have a lot of questions but they don't really want to go into it it's like why that's a job and the only time you wouldn't do that job is when you probably signed an NDA and that's what I'm questioning today. Like, what is going on with the journalists who all wanted to have like a really big talk with Hassan? And after they apparently did, they are all backing out. It's like, yeah, like, wh what is that? Like, something is fishy here. And I can't really put my finger on it, to be honest. But as a former journalist, I can tell you this is not how we're conducting interviews. 
And yes, I know people are like, yo, this really speaks about like in which state the games journalism is. Sure, some people, yes, but the people so far who had interviews with Blue Box, certainly not. They know how to conduct interviews. And they choose not to this time. So I wonder why. However, we will probably find out more about it when uh, the Gamescom is uh, coming around. That is in just, let me see, in about three days when we have the uh, Gamescom opening nightlife with Jeff Keighley. And that will be probably the last chance for all the people who believe that something game-wise is going on with Blue Box Studios uh, will happening at that point. And I'm really curious about it. But with that said, that was it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you might leave a like on your way out. If you didn't like this video, for whatever reason, well, the dislike button is right next to it. And if you're new to the channel, you want to see more opinion videos, reaction videos, gameplay, and so on and so forth, the whole gameplay shebang, um, I would appreciate if you also might consider to subscribe to the channel because it would help me out a great deal. And I would really, really appreciate that. With that said, thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Stay safe. Bye-bye.